When looking at a whole life insurance policy, how much value can I put on the statement you have a guaranteed rate of 4% because we hear that often and wow, a guaranteed cash value interest rate of 4% in today's environment where it is difficult to find a bank account that might pay 0.4% for a long period of time. And guaranteed rates of 4% have been intact with insurance companies uh, really since 1980, especially with the larger carriers. So the question is, when I have a guaranteed rate of 4%, is that what I am actually earning on my cash value? So when it comes to the guaranteed rate of 4%, what is important to emphasize here is that that is a gross rate that is credited after the company's insurance expenses and mortality charges. Meaning, I am purchasing a whole life insurance policy and I can design it for maximum cash value. We're gonna show you an example here. But whenever I see a guaranteed rate or dividend rate for that matter, that is a gross rate that again is credited after the cost of insurance, after the mortality expenses. What is important to look at here is my net internal rate of return, IRR. And really what that shows, what that displays is when I pay money into a cash value life insurance policy, what am I earning each and every year? So I've got my annual internal rate of return year over year. How much does it grow by? Is it 2%? Is it 3%? Is it 5%? You're not going to see that if I have a guaranteed rate of 4%. And then I wanna look at my average internal rate of return as well, meaning over a 10, 20, or 30 year span, what was the average growth on that policy on cash value? And you can do the same thing with the death benefit as well, which is interesting. But main point of emphasis here, if you're ever looking at a whole life insurance policy, whether it's with us or with any agent, remember that the guaranteed rate, that is a gross rate. You will not at any point in time see a actual return of 4% on your cash value. That will not occur when you actually study the, the numbers. So the thing is, if I'm looking at a guaranteed rate or a present dividend rate, whatever it might be, how do I maximize cash value? Because in any environment, we're gonna focus on the guarantees here. Here are the two elements that are going to drive the guarantees, or I should say drive the cash value north as much as possible. That is the policy design. We frequently talk about this, right? When I design a policy, I can actually choose where my money goes, right? If I have $1, I can choose what percentage of that goes towards the insurance premium, which first buys me a death benefit and shows nothing in cash value early on. Eventually, it begins to build equity or cash value. Or of that $1, again, I can choose how much went towards premium, but then I can choose how much goes directly into riders that accelerate the cash value growth immediately. I see equity immediately. Money I have access to begins to capitalize, begins to yield the guaranteed rate sooner rather than later. And then the company selection. And this is interesting to me because when you look at different insurance companies, you'll often see a guaranteed rate of 4% is very consistent with the majority of insurance companies out there. Yet, if you take a policy and design it in the exact same manner with company A and compare that to company B, then company C and D, a variety of companies, you will often see different net cash value. Sometimes they'll be close, sometimes they won't be close at all. And a lot of times as a consumer or even an agent, we might look at that and say, okay, I have a guaranteed rate of 4%. I'm paying in the exact same dollar. The policy is designed in the exact same manner. If I'm putting in a dollar in, same percentage is directed towards premium, same percentage is directed towards different riders to grow my cash value. Like what's the difference? Why does one company look so much better than the other? Well, it could be a number of factors. What kind of fees and loads do they have associated with different riders, their term insurance charges. It could be their mortality expenses or insurance expenses. Could be a lot of factors that play into it. I don't mean to get too technical on you here. We're gonna look at an example though, but these two items are the most important thing to look at. And really what it requires for an agent is to show multiple options. As a consumer, we want to make sure we are seeing multiple options especially if the guaranteed values are of a concern to us. If they are, well, it's very easy to request. They can be produced with just about any company with any type of design. 
Now, you will see this, the guarantees, uh, very valuable for individuals, the individual marketplace, not to everyone. You know, I will add a statement that if you look at the top insurance carriers for the past 150 years, they have all operated in a non-guaranteed environment. However, if I'm approaching a cash value life insurance policy and I'm interested in the cash value so I can grow it, then I can use it, I wanna be creative with it, and I want to set my expectations properly, looking at the guarantees is a great way to do that. If things go south, I always know no matter what happens, if I make the payments according to the schedule I originally started with, I'm going to see that much cash value based off of what is guaranteed and probably more. Now, that's consistent of the individual marketplace. Good to look at that. But then in the corporate marketplace, a ton of emphasis is put on the guarantees. You know, we worked with a bank earlier this year in setting up a Boley product, bank-owned life insurance policy. There's a number of companies that we looked at and the bank actually decided to use two different insurance carriers, just how boldly structure they had to based off the size of the bank. But my point here is a lot of emphasis was put on the guarantees and you will find that the guaranteed rates with a Boley product actually vary from company to company. Some are stronger than others. And it's interesting when you look at the net internal rate of return, often the company with the stronger guarantee was producing the stronger net internal rate of return, both on guaranteed and non-guaranteed values. But that's on the corporate market. That can be consistent of Boley. And also individual products are often used for corporations on a different level. But let's take a look at some examples here. So again, with a guaranteed rate of 4%, key point here, gross rate credited after, always remember this, insurance expenses and mortality chart mortality charges if you're just interested in okay if the guarantee is not actually four percent like what am i earning that's what i'm interested in net internal rate of return what's it growing by so we're going to look at different design policies with one company here one of the four major mutuals on a 40 year old male same health rating on all these examples, but we're going to look at the guarantees. Look at this thing, man. A lot of columns going on. We're gonna go through it nice and slow. So on the far left, we have a policy that is designed truly for maximum cash value. All of these scenarios, all we looked at was a guaranteed rate of 4%. No dividend assumption, nothing like that. So we paid in $50,000 for seven years. What we did here was really max fund the policy up to the MEC limit each and every year and then stopped after seven years. This is a great way to max fund a policy seven years or less, that is. What is highlighted in yellow here represents the break-even point between years four and five based off of a 4% rate, so no additional surplus or dividends paid. And then minimum premium, approximately a 1090 split. Got a little bit lower here. The minimum premium is just over a 9%, 9% based off of the $50,000. The base premium is about $4,500, a couple bucks over that actually. Point being though, rich equity right off the bat, breaking even in an extremely conservative scenario between four and five, and then cash value continues to grow. And we can design this where we continue to make payments, no problem, but here we do not. So let's look at the internal rate of return. So I'm gonna circle the annual IRR in gold. What this represents is what I am earning year over year. So if I ever look at a mutual fund account or a stock that I've invested in and I said, okay, what did I earn this year? Or what did the S&P 500 produce in 2019? About 30%. What did the S&P average over the past 30 years? Maybe it's seven to nine percent. So annual is what I earned that specific year on the internal rate of return and then average factors in all years. So year one, the annual and average will be the same, but I've got about a negative 10% hit. Why that is, is my premium is about 
What happens with the base premium, especially in the first year, the company overcharges me for the cost of insurance. They overcharge me for the death benefit and nothing shows up in cash value. That is why I have that hit. I pay in 50 and I've got just about 45,000 in this example. Year two, make the same 50K payment, grows from 44.8 to 94.4. So I've got a negative 0.37%. First two years are the worst years of any life insurance policy where I see less money come back to cash value relative to what I pay into the product. After that, I begin to see, okay, picks up the pace, and this is what I'm earning year over year. So tops out at just about 3.35%. Now, we did everything right here, so we can use this or consider it a tax-free internal rate of return, meaning if I was earning 6% in the market or mutual funds, that would be close to an equivalent here based off of 3.35 tax-free. I don't have to worry about any additional taxes or, or fees being taken out of this, assuming I don't trigger a taxable event. If I don't mech it out, if I don't cash in the policy with a gain on it, there's ways that I can trigger a taxable event. But again, I know I mention this frequently, if we do everything right, this is a tax-free annual internal rate of return. Okay, that's great. Now let's look at the average. We'll circle this in blue. Year one, same thing, negative 10% because I've only got one year. However, if I look at year two, the annual IRR was negative 0.37%, yet the average is negative 3.74%. Big difference there. The reason why is the average by year two is factoring in that I paid in a total of $100,000 and I have just under $95,000 available in cash value. It's going to factor each year into the equation here. When it goes positive, so you see between years four and five, where we had highlighted in yellow when we break even, that's where I'm no longer in the red and I've got a positive average internal rate of return. Here, again, this is a tax-free yield, and this is guaranteed here. I'm looking at the guarantees, guaranteed rate, I should say. Tops out a little over 2.85%, and we can scroll down here as well. So is that great? No, not at all, but is it decent for an area to position money and have life insurance? But again, an area to position money where I have access to that cash value to then use for other assets, if I want to use this as a source of leverage to perhaps invest in real estate, pay off debt, invest in my business, we've got a lot of content where we go through that in detail. But that is the difference between the average and annual there. And then the other thing we want to touch on where we've got these other two samples here, remember when we talked about company selection, same insurance company here, and then also policy design? So same company, same 40-year-old male, same out-of-pocket to him as the policyholder, yet different cash values here. This is where it's so interesting in the life insurance industry where I can buy a policy from the same company, same agent, and then see drastically different results with that same company elsewhere, whether it be the same agent or different agent. So the difference here is here we've got a 25% base premium. And what that means is of the $50,000, 25% instead of the minimum, what we just looked at, 25%, which would be 12,500, is going toward the base premium. So what that results is immediately less cash value right off the bat. First year is a negative 23% hit. It does pick up the pace over time. You'll see on the annual internal rate of return, regardless of the design, pretty much see the same thing, right? About 3.35% as the years pick up. However, the average is going to suffer. So the break-even point is between years six and seven here, actually. So I'm gonna clean this up real quick. So when you see it go positive there, or I should say in the black on the IRR, 
is the break-even point as well, and we'll validate that here in a second. All right, so seven years in, looking at the guarantees here, I've paid in 50 times seven, 350K. Seven years in, I've got 355. Year six, I was just about there. I paid in 300, I had 298, so that's, that's solid. Then over in this example, with the 50% base premium, that means 25,000 of the 50K was directed towards the base premium. The rest into PUA's accelerating cash value growth. Break even point, just about year eight. Same company, different design. IRR, much different right off the bat. And look at the average. So, I mean, we've got here in orange, if we look at year 20, with the minimum design policy, 561, average IRR of 2.81%. Keep in mind, we're looking at worst case scenarios here. 542, so just about $20,000 less of value by setting that premium higher. When you look at the guarantees or no dividend assumption, the lower the premium is, the stronger the policy will be every single time. We're looking at the guarantees. <clears throat> here in year 20, with a 25% base premium, 513. Big difference in value there. And you'll see consistency here, and this would be the case if we fund it for a shorter period of time. Here we paid 50 for seven years. That really had to do with the MEC test and the seven pay premium test. But if we go down 50 years to when this guy's about 90 years old, what do you notice? 1.132 in the minimum premium policy and about 2.5% on the average internal rate of return. Here, we're at 2.46%, 1,095,000, about $30,000 less in value, and then this guy, 2.34, $1,037,000 in cash value. And if you are interested in the death benefit, because it is a life insurance policy that's important, let's circle, circle this in gold, you'll find that the long-term death benefit follows the long-term cash value. So it's interesting, when looking at the guarantees, I know we provided a ton of value there, uh, well, a ton of value, ton of information. Hopefully you found it valuable. I don't wanna just automatically assume that it was. Sorry about that. Um, but when looking at the guarantees, ton of info, key points. Remember that it is a gross rate. I am not earning 4% on my cash value. That's why we went through all that detail with the actual internal rate of return. But look at the internal rate of return, I've got the guarantee of 4%, gross rate, credited after the insurance expenses and mortality charges. So if you ask, why am I not earning 4%, it is a life insurance policy, I'm still purchasing the life insurance benefit, no matter how much I minimize or reduce those insurance expenses. Hope you enjoyed this one. If you have any questions, reach out anytime, and we'll talk to you soon. Thank you so much. Hey guys, Steve Parisi here. If you enjoyed the content you just saw, please subscribe, like, and hit the notification bell for future videos. If you'd like more information or to see some custom policies for yourself, feel free to call or email our offices at the contact information below.